What in the world? You are no longer in your world, Clay Earhart. Clay? Oh my god, oh my god, I'm in the doctor's body! Are you not Clay Earhart? I'm Trisha Blackburn. What have you done to me? I apologize for the apparent error. I appear to have downloaded your mind to the wrong body. So Dr. Earhart is running around in my body? You've got to switch us back! I'm afraid that may not be possible. What? I apologize. Just who are you, anyway? Thought I was dead for sure. Is this a clerkship? Negative, Commander Hardcase. That's Captain. I demand to know who you are and why you've taken me prisoner. I'm an artificial intelligence here to serve you during your expedition here on Epsilon Theta B. What? How the hell did I end up on Epsilon Theta B? You were transmitted here from Earth. Transmitted? As information to be reconstructed here, affirmative. Where are my crew? All four of them are being awakened presently. Four? There were 412 people on my ship. This is your waking chamber, Mr. Phil. What have you done to me? My tentacles... Oh, my tentacles are gone! Tentacles? I'm a Cthulhuian. Our tentacles are our strength! You are a human, Miss Quill. The mind transmission process is known to cause group hallucinations for the entangled minds of temporary memory blockage. Whatever you believe you've been experiencing is not real. Your state of confusion will subside with time. What? You're, you're trying to tell me that I am deluded about what species I am? Affirmative. What planet am I on? Epsilon Theta B. That's a confederation world. There's no such thing as a galactic confederation, just as there's no such species as Cthulians. This is a newly discovered world with no intelligent life, which you've been transmitted here from Earth to explore. Computer? Who am I? You are Misty the Quill. But who is Misty the Quill? That's something you will have to decide for yourself. This is not what I expected. Welcome to Epsilon Theta B, Clay Earhart. I sincerely apologize for your mind being downloaded to the wrong body. Oh, I should be thanking you for the upgrade. It's nice to be young again, and I think I can get used to being a beautiful woman. So, what is this place? This is your waiting chamber, Clay Earhart. What year is it? Am I a prisoner here? Am I really a doctor? Why was I brought here? That's a lot of questions. Well? 2751. No. Yes. To explore and colonize. I've been downloaded to a colony? Ships can't travel more than a tenth the speed of light, but a mine can be transmitted at the speed of light and downloaded to a clone body grown on site. You're saying this base was sent on a slow boat, all automated, designed to recreate our bodies and minds after we transmitted here at light speed? That's correct, Dr. Earhart. The ship which brought me took 300 years to get here and another time to prepare for you. But your mind spent only 17 years in transit from Earth. Does this mean there's another of me on Earth? The real me? In my original body? Affirmative. I didn't really exist until I was transmitted? Or until I was put in this body just now? That depends on your philosophical theory of mind. So, let me get this straight. I'm a doctor for a space colony, who's a copy of a doctor on Earth, who somehow hallucinated being a ship's doctor on a ship that doesn't exist, and who's missing his true memories, or I guess more accurately, that Earth doctor's true memories? Affirmative, Dr. Earhart. 
The memories will come to you over time. Well, where's my wife, Minnie? Is she here? It's interesting how long it took you to reach that question. Welcome to Epsilon Theta B, Minnie Earhart. Do you have any questions for me? Are the others in the fountain room already? Hard case and the flow have been there for a few minutes. Earhart's just entered. Blackburn will be out in a minute. Then I'll go join them. QuietPlease.org presents Beyond Awakening Starring John Gauntz as Captain Mac Hardcase David Loftus as Dr. Clay Earhart Steph Kanapa as Commander Misty Quill, and Gwyneth Knight as Ensign Trisha Blackburn Episode 4 Awakening Anton! Another survivor. Good to see you, Captain. It's a fresh start, and it may surprise you to learn I'm an There old you are, you bastard. I'm not what? <laughs> Wait! Stop! Get off him! Come on, guys! Help me pull him off! Let me at him! You'll kill him! He blew up my ship and murdered 407 of my crew! None of them ever lived. They were my people, my crew, my friends, my brother! They were sure as hell real to me! But I'm not Dr. Earhart! Oh, he has a twin then! I'm Trisha Blackburn. Our bodies got swapped. You want me to beat up a young woman, is that it? You wouldn't mind if I smashed her face in? I'd prefer you didn't, sir. I'm hoping to get it back. Is this true? It's true, dear. It's really me in here. <sighs> Tell us more about reality, dear. What will we need to know here? How would I know anything? You encouraged me. You told me the ship wasn't real and that you'd known it all along. You seemed to know what awaited us. I didn't know such thing. What? You seem very confused, dear. Evidently. Computer, can you verify this swap story? Affirmative. How did that happen? There was an unfortunate error during the mind loading. Mind loading? The process by which your minds were placed into your bodies. Now, see. Call me old-fashioned if you want, but I believe in leaving minds in the bodies they're born in, so you don't get this kind of thing. Those minds and bodies are on Earth. My scientific training makes me It's a fascinating but idea, this many mind transference. Things have happened the past few days. Would be to you. Seems you were always trying to pull brains out of heads. Living proof. Congrats. Now this somebody is else is doing it for body. you. At least you Computer, got what would the idea Everybody man. shut the fuck up! We need to be organized here. We need to keep our command structure. We need to ask this computer a series of probing questions, one at a time, to establish our situation and what to do about it. <laughs> you don't even have the scientific background to know what to ask. Well, that's right. But I'm in command, so I decide who does. Commander Lequill, as science officer, you'll be asking the questions. The stage is yours. Computer, am I actually a science officer? <sighs> You're a mission specialist with relevant scientific expertise, so it would be roughly accurate to describe you as a science officer. But I don't actually know which science is real in reality. Like, faster than light travel apparently isn't. Over time, the hallucinatory parts of your memory will fade. Well, Computer, what would you recommend we do now? I recommend you begin your survey of the planet. Your memories will come back to you as you work. Right now, you need to settle into a structured routine. Good idea. 
We'll stick together and use survey pattern 2B. No. What was that, doctor? I said no. There's no reason I should take orders from you. I'm your superior officer. No, you aren't. The Confederation doesn't exist. Who knows if any of us are even officers? The computer called me commander. We were all effectively just born minutes ago. I feel no compulsion to follow any command structure my double on Earth may have agreed to 17 years ago. And all we have so far is this computer's word about what's happening. Frankly, I don't know if it's telling us the truth about everything. There's a lot that doesn't make sense yet. So I'm going to do what I think is right, which means I'm going to explore, but not on your terms. I'll go with you, Kai. Let's go. Any other mutineers I should know about? No? Good. Let's head out. So this is it. Epsilon Theta B. Reminds me of the Ploma Desert on Cthunia where I grew up. Um, I mean, where I've always believed I grew up. But now I'm told it doesn't exist. Is it safe? I mean... Should we be wearing protective suits or something? Isn't that your job to decide, Doc? Oh, sorry. Ensign. When I hear his voice, it's hard to remember it's you. It'll be a tough adjustment. If it's hard for you, imagine how it is for me. I'm not detecting anything hazardous. I assume the computer would have warned us. Then let's move out. At least the desert environment doesn't put in too many obstacles. We can head for that little ridge up there. Probably has the best view. Are we going to keep ignoring the elephant in the room? We're outdoors, sir. The elephant in the desert. What's that, sir? I feel like we've got a lot of metaphorical elephants. The 407 shipmates we've lost. If they never lived, did we really lose them? It's easy for you to say, Edmund. You only spent a few days with them. I can imagine it's a lot harder for you to believe. I can't accept that my brother never lived. Sir... I've lost my entire planet and identity. Is there any alternative to accepting it? I haven't given up on you. But according to the computer... Don't believe everything we've been told, Ensign Blackburn. You, of all people, should appreciate a healthy skepticism. You think the Chimera is still out there somewhere? It's possible. But the doctor blew it up. The self-destruct... I accept that our recent experiences weren't real. You were right about that. But what if, at some point, the five of us were captured by the clerk, and this is all some sort of mind control or interrogation technique of theirs? If that's the case, sir, how do we prove or disprove it? Don't know. It's just an idea. The problems I was having with our reality on the ship, they were things that stretched back through my whole life, or what I thought was my life. On the other hand, this new reality feels pretty odd too, even though it hasn't broken any laws of physics. This world feels much less real to me. It's not even my real body. Being stuck in this body is certainly weird for me too. I don't know. Nothing we can do about it at the moment. But let's keep a lookout for signs that this is some sort of clear deception. Think about what might show us the difference. Aye, sir. Aye, sir. You know what this reminds me of? Looks kind of like a cactus to me. I mean this whole situation. 
what this whole situation reminds me of. What's that, dear? A global skeptical hypothesis. Oh? A scenario where there's no way to come up with any evidence for or against any of our experiences being real. I could be dreaming. I could be a brain in a vat of a mad scientist being fed a simulated world. An evil demon could be feeding false sensations. I could have just come into existence 10 seconds ago with memories designed by someone or something to deceive me into thinking I'm middle-aged. That's hard to believe. Compared to what? Compared to the computer story of how we all popped into existence hours ago with memories copied over that we somehow can't remember right yet? Still, it's absurd to say we're brains and vats. That's so unlikely. Why? What possible evidence can you come up with against it? No odds can be assigned. All evidence you could cite is something the deceiver would have naturally put into your mind. It's like if I have a patient on adrenopharmacopolamine. They sincerely believe whatever I tell them to believe. You could pinch your arm. I can pinch myself to see if I'm dreaming a conventional dream but not to see if I'm dreaming a dream designed to replicate all the sensations of being awake. The simulation wouldn't really have to replicate the sensations of being awake. It wouldn't? If you've never been awake. Oh, I see what you mean. Any primitive simulation might fool me if I've never known reality first. You see, there's no way I can know. You can't do anything about it. So you just have to go on with life. That's how people deal with global skeptical hypotheses. Until something happens, like what just happened to us, we discovered our reality really was an illusion. Shouldn't that have solved the conundrum? Unfortunately not. I can't take this new world at face value, because I know from experience it could be a lie. You figured out the last one. That should give you some confidence you can figure out this one. I figured it out because somebody wanted me to. Flaws were introduced intentionally to make me aware it was a false reality. There was the sleep thing, and Trisha's memory was altered, and somebody spoke to me through your body at one point and gave the game away. But what if there's nobody helping me out this time? What if they want me to be fooled this time, but it's still a lie and I'll never know? That's an interesting creature there. Where? On the flower. Oh. Yeah. Like a combination of a butterfly and a spider. Clay, it's getting dark. We can camp out here overnight. That's why I brought the pack. You've only got one sleeping bag. So? Clay, I'm not sleeping with you. What have I done? I'm just not attracted to women like that. But I'm not a woman. I'm just a man in the wrong body. I'm still your husband. I don't care. I wouldn't care if you were biologically male. Well, you're pansexual. I am not. I just don't find you attractive in that body. What was that? I'm not detecting any large animal life. Well, I wouldn't want to meet a plant who made a noise like that. Should we head back to the base? It's getting dark anyway. Moves fast, whatever it is. Must be camouflaged. We should warn the doctor and Minnie. Blackbird, call the others and apprise them of the possible situation. Find out if they know anything more about it than we do. Misty, I need you to take point. Be ready for anything. Hello? Sir, I, I can't. Can you hear me? Why not, Commander? S sir, I don't have my tentacles. So? How can I defend you without Testing. my tentacles, sir? I'm essentially a multiple amputee. I believe in you, Misty. Testing. With all due respect, sir, it doesn't matter how much you believe or I believe. 
Belief won't bring my tentacles back, and they were the source of all my strength. Of any Cthulian strength. Any warrior who loses even one tentacle in battle can only retire. You don't have the option of retirement, Commander Laquell. I need you to pull yourself together and do the best you can. <sighs> Aye, sir. I'll try, but I've warned you. Ensign Blackburn? I can't raise them, sir. Something's interfering with the signal. Okay, we'll head to base very carefully. Trisha, you stand back to back with me so we have our eyes on both sides while Misty deals with anything ahead of us. Lasers in hand, everyone. Yes, sir. Let's go. That sounded like it was right in front of me. But you saw nothing? On top of everything else, Unreal, it's like we're dealing with an unreal monster. Let's hope so, Ensign. What was that? Let's just keep moving. Sounds like it's on both sides of us. There must be two of them. Or it's a ventriloquist. I'd swear they were trying to contact us, but the signal cut out. What was that? I haven't detected any large fauna. Maybe it's just as well that I gave my sleeping bag to you. I can stay up and stand watch. Just what you've always wanted to do, Clay. What do you mean? Staying up. You keep trying. It'll be a good test. If I'm still awake half an hour from now, it's possible this world is real. It's got dog! I mean, I mean Trisha! It's got Trisha! If I didn't know it was Trisha in his body, I could listen to Dr. Earhart scream like this all day. Sir! Right. Concentrate your fire as close to Trisha as you can without hitting her. Maybe we can make it drop her. Not working. Lasers seem to have no effect. It must not interact with the electromagnetic spectrum. That's why it's invisible. So no energy weapons. We'll have to use blunt force on it. If it can pick us up, we should be able to hit it. As it's holding Trisha, we'll be able to see where it is. We'll take it from both sides. You go around the back while I attack it from the front. Sir, I can't fight this thing appendage to appendage without my tentacles. Cthulians are never afraid, Commander. But I'm human now. Not to me, you're not. Let's go. Wait, what? It vanished. Technically, it never appeared in the first place, sir. But Ensign Blackburn vanished. Theories, please, Commander. Fast! You don't suppose... What? I think it ate her, sir. Would that make her invisible to us? Possibly. Do we have any options? Not that I can see, sir. Beyond Awakening, Episode 4, Awakening, was written and produced by Paul Nero. It starred Gwyneth Knight as Dr. Clay Earhart, John Gauntz as Captain Mac Hardcase, Nala Campbell as the computer, Steph Kanapa as Commander Misty Quill, David Loftus as Instant Trisha Blackburn, Mel Crushmore as Mitty Earhart, Nick Ben Long as the monster, and Paul Naron was the announcer. Music licensed from Joel Studler and Creative Commons Zero and Public Domain Sources. Hi, Paul here. Beyond Awakening needs your support. Please rate or review us on all the podcasting services you use, in particular Spotify and Apple, so that the algorithms will recommend the show to others. We also need financial support. You could help one time for no reward, or on a monthly basis through our Patreon, where you'll be rewarded with early access to episodes and special mini-episodes. 
go to quietplease.org slash awakening slash support. Thank you for listening. We'd love to hear any feedback.